and guiding us and showing us your favor and your mercy. Amen. All right. Well, once again, welcome. Uh, share this live with somebody. Somebody you know needs to hear the word of God. I promise you. Somebody I know needs to hear the word of God. I went on here and I shared it uh, with people I know that may need to hear a word from the Lord. So you take a quick second and go and share this live with somebody. All you got to do is type their name in the box and click it and hit it. And they'll pick this up and they can join in with us and for the next 30 minutes and get the word of God. So uh, I hope you're having a good Wednesday. Uh, I hope that uh, everything is going your way. I hope that you are prospering. I hope that you are happy, safe, and enjoying your life. And I hope that you are experiencing God's very best for your life, okay? So tonight, I want to talk to you about the Holy Ghost, okay? The Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, uh, it is the third person of the Trinity, now, you, got, you have to refer to him as a person. He's not an it, okay? He is a person. He is the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity. The Trinity is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is who is with you and I as Christians right now. Jesus said in the Gospels that if he didn't go away, the Comforter wouldn't come. He said he would send us another comforter after he left earth. So after he was crucified and he went back to heaven in the book of Acts chapter 1 on a cloud, uh, in Acts chapter 2, uh, the Holy Spirit came and took Jesus' place here with the body of Christ. Now the difference between Jesus and the Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us, Okay. Jesus was outside of us, of course, but he gave us the Holy Ghost to live on the inside of everyone that put their faith in Jesus Christ. So say this with me. The Holy Ghost lives on the inside of me. Say it one more time. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. The Holy Spirit of God, the very person and presence of God lives on the inside of you if you've been born again. Matter of fact, it is the Holy Spirit that is the agent of your new birth, okay? So we have God's Spirit present with us right now. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to get a piece of heaven. You got a piece of heaven right now living on the inside of you, ladies and gentlemen. If you've been born again, a piece of heaven, an impartation from the throne of God was put on the inside of you when you made Jesus the Lord of your life. And the Bible promises us that he'll never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Come on. So God gives you his spirit at the new birth, and he's here to stay. Now, this is one thing a lot of people don't know about the Holy Ghost. Not only is the Holy Ghost in you, but the Holy Ghost has been made one with you. God gave you his spirit to be one with you. And the Bible lets us know in two different places, places that when, when, when the Holy Spirit comes, he seals us with his presence. Amen. He is the down payment of heaven. He is the earnest money or the deposit of heaven. He came straight from heaven and he lives on the inside of us. Okay. So let me say this again. You got a part of heaven living on the inside of you. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven. You got some of it living on the inside of you right now, and that some of it is in the person of the Holy Ghost, okay? So why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this tonight. Listen, because if we want to fulfill the assignment of God upon our lives and live our lives to the fullest, we've got to begin to first recognize the Holy Spirit, know who he is, know what he's all about, and then begin to cooperate with him, okay? We got to cooperate with him. So I just told you he's the Spirit of God. Now watch this. The Holy Spirit does not come to do the work, okay? You know, you hear people pray all the time, Lord, go down to the hospital. Lord, go down to the prison. Lord, go do this. Lord, go do that. Let me, let me share something with you. Quit sending the Lord to do stuff that you're supposed to do. 
The Holy Spirit was not given to you uh, for you to put him to work. The Holy Spirit was given to come alongside and help you and I do the work that we've been assigned to do. The work is for us to do, not for him. His job is to work alongside of us and lead and guide us and empower us and protect us and keep us and encourage us and build us up as we go about doing the will of God on planet Earth. And I hope and pray that you have made some level of commitment in your life to do the will of God in your life, okay? Please, please, please make a commitment to do the will of God. Here's why. And I'm not going to go take no long side trip, but I want to let you know something. There is nothing on this earth more important than accomplishing the will of God for your life. Watch this. You came in this world naked, and you're going to leave here naked. The Bible says you didn't bring nothing in here, and you ain't taking nothing out of here. But watch this. You have the Holy Spirit. And you can do the work of God, and the Bible lets us know that the work we do for the Lord will last even into eternity. So the Holy Spirit was given to help us. Somebody say help. That's right. The Holy Spirit was given to help you. He was not given just to make you feel bad about your sin. He was not uh, given, once, like I said a few minutes ago, for you to be sending him all over town. He was given to help and assist and empower us to get the work of the Lord done. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. So tonight in Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read about three or four scriptures. The part I want to tap into is that he was given to you to lead you. Okay? The Holy Spirit was given to us. One of his parts is to lead us. And Romans 8 chapter 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... These are the sons of God. So Romans 8, 14 lets us know that if you're led by God's spirit, then you are a son of God. Say this with me. I am a son of God, okay? If the Holy Spirit is in you, you've been born again, listen, you're, that makes you a son of God. Come on. You are a son of God. You're not going to be a son of God when, when you get to heaven. You're a son of God right now. Your sonship does not improve when you get to heaven. You will be no more a son when you get there than you are right now. You are a son of God right now here today. The creator of the universe is your daddy, okay? And uh, Romans 8, 14 says if you are led by the Spirit of God, and let me share something with you. You are led by the Spirit of God whether you feel like you are or not. Come on. And that's not based upon your feelings. If you've been born again, you, he's leading you and he's guiding you. The question is, are you paying attention to him? That's the question. He's leading you. He's guiding Matter of fact, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger's voice they will not follow. So you have the Holy Spirit and you can hear him. Matter of fact, you hear him real good and he's leading and guiding you. The question is, do you believe it? Do you know it? And are you following him? That's the real question. So we are led by God's Spirit, and that makes us sons of God. We are sons of God. We are created in the image and the likeness of God. When God made man, he took a part of himself and made us, and he made us just like him, okay? So that's why when you come into Christ, he calls you sons, and we're sons of God. Verse 15, Romans 8, 15 says this here. It says, for, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So he's telling you the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you does not bring bondage into your life. Let me say something. Listen, stop. you got people who don't want to be a Christian because they think that being a Christian brings bondage into their life. No, being a Christian brings freedom into your life. And without the Holy Spirit and Christ's likeness on the inside of you, you already in bondage. The Spirit brings freedom, not bondage. Come on. The Spirit brings uh, a release. The Spirit brings a joy. The Spirit brings a peace. The, spring, the Spirit brings a satisfaction. There's nothing like the satisfaction of waking up in the middle of the night and having somebody to talk to that will listen to you and talk back to you. There's, there, there's no greater satisfaction than knowing that God Almighty 
got me on his mind all the time. How do I know he got me on his mind all the time? Because his spirit walks with me, and his spirit talks with me. And watch this, like the old folks say, and his spirit tells me that I'm his own, okay? So the spirit does not bring bondage. The spirit brings freedom into your life. I think it's 2 Corinthians says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the Holy Spirit that you have, he is there to bring freedom into your life. So if you're in bondage tonight to sickness, to debt, to disease, to whatever bondages that might be trying to hold you captive, I'm telling you, you got the Holy Ghost and you don't have to be in bondage not one more day in your life. Come on, why? Because I got the Spirit of God living on inside of me and you just need to recognize he there and begin to cooperate with him. So verse 15 again, he doesn't bring bondage. Watch this here. Bondage again to fear. When the Holy Spirit is there, he, he, he teaches you how not to walk in fear. Come on. We've been in this world so long, we're experts at being scared of everything. Huh? That's right. We're, we're, we're experts at, being, at worrying. We're experts at walking in fear and not trusting nobody or not trusting nothing. So the, when the Holy Spirit comes, he teaches you not to, not, not to fear. That's why the Bible says the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. That's what Paul told Timothy, but a power and love and of a sound mind. So when I know I got the Holy Spirit here, I don't have to fear anybody or anything. Why? Because I got God Almighty walking with me and in me to help me in every situation. There's no joy in the world like facing an obstacle or whatever it might be and being able to turn to the Lord. Come on. Now, don't even have to look up towards heaven. I don't have to look up. All you got to do is look in. Look into heaven, the heaven that's on the inside of me, and begin to pray out, come on, and to talk out with my creator, with my, with my guide, with my protector, with my source. And I talk those things out with him in, in my own personal closet or, or by my own bedside. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, we get stuff done. Come on, that's why the Bible says you don't even know what you're supposed to pray for, but he gives us, give us the Spirit to help us with our prayer life, okay? So he brings freedom. He takes us out of fear. He takes us out of bondage. He's able to bring you out of worry. He's able to break the shackles off of your life. He's able to bring you to a place where you are bold. You're able to stand before any man, any place, any time. You're able to do things that you never thought you were going to be able to do. Why? Because you're free, you're not afraid, and now you're able to go and do what God called you to do. I'm telling you, there is no better life than that. And you got to make up in your mind that I'm going to begin to pay attention to the Holy Spirit that God gave me. Let's finish verse 15. It says, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Now, I've been taught that word Abba means daddy. And what that does, that creates an intimacy, okay? God is not just your father. He's your daddy. Come on. He is your protector. He, he, he wants to be close to you. He wants to be with you at all times. He don't never want to leave your side. He wants to be involved in everything that you got going on. Why are you scared tonight? Why are you nervous? Why are you angry? Why do you have a, a grievous spirit upon you? Why, what, what's going on? You got the God Almighty living on the inside of you in the person of the Holy Ghost. And listen, he's your daddy. And I don't know about you, but I got a good daddy. And if I go to my dad and need help with something, he's either going to help me and give it to me or give me the advice that I need to help me get it done, okay? That's how God want to be in your life. He gave you his spirit so he will never have to leave your side. He'll be right there for you to lead and guide you, protect you, take care of you. So that's why he gave us his spirit. And the Bible says in verse 15, he cries out, Daddy, Father, come on. He's trying to connect you with the, with the Father in heaven. Let's keep going. Verse number 16. Romans 8, 16, it says, the Spirit himself. You, you notice, I think the King James Version says, the Spirit itself. Well, let's correct the King James. It's the Spirit himself, like it says here in the New King James, because he's a person. He's not a it. He's a him. Uh, the Spirit himself, watch this, bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. So this word bears witness what that means is if that the Holy Spirit, he bears witness with your spirit. This is huge. 
What does this mean? This simply means this right here. God does not relate to you according to your mind, ladies and gentlemen. God relates to us, born again people, he relates to us with our spirit. See, your mind can't figure God out. I mean, you, you know, you, you, you just can't do it. You, you just can't do it. He's beyond your thinking capability. That's why in Ephesians chapter 3, the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. There's a reason he said that. He said Paul wrote that because the Holy Spirit and God do not relate to our mind. They relate to our spirit. Okay? So your spirit man is what was changed in you. Your spirit man was made brand new. Your spirit man is perfect. There is no sin in your spirit. There is no fear in your spirit. There is no doubt in your spirit. There is no fornication, no, no dope smoking, no lying, no gossiping, no backbiting. There is nothing at all wrong with your spirit. Your spirit man is perfect. Your spirit man is holy. Your spirit man is righteous. Your spirit man is 100% pure. Your spirit man is heaven ready right now. Your spirit man is an exact image of Jesus Christ. Come on. And why does it have to be like that? It's like that because God cannot dwell with sin. Okay? So he has to approach us through our spirit, and we have to approach him with our spirit. So when Romans 8, 16 says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, that lets us know God has a relationship with my spirit man. So this is important. Listen. So don't never say because of the sin in your life, you can't talk to God. Huh? No, I know you've been told that all your life. That's a lie. Come on. Now you can tell your preacher. I don't care who you tell. That's a lie. Don't ever think because of your sin you can't talk to God. Watch this here. Because God ain't talking to you anyway. He's talking to your spirit. He's not bearing witness with your mind. He's bearing witness with your spirit. So what do you do to get that dirt off of you? You repent of what you've done. Come on. But the communication between God and your spirit, it never ceases. It cannot cease. I told you in the beginning, when you got born again, God made you one with his spirit. And he wrapped and sealed you in the Holy Ghost in, in, in that eternal uh, wrap whatever you want to call it, and that's where the real you is. Come on. The Holy Spirit communicates with your spirit, and what we have to do, watch this, here we go, all that sin I just got through talking about, all that stuff come from your unrenewed mind, come on, and your soul that still hasn't figured everything out yet. So what we have to do is renew our mind, according to Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, renew our mind and change the way we think, and when you change the way you think, come on, and you change the way you see life and the way you, you view things and you, you change your, your perspective on life from, what, from the way you was raised to the way God's word says it. What happens is now your mind is aligned with your spirit and your spirit is aligned with the Holy Spirit. Watch this here. And then the things of heaven begin to happen in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's really just that easy. Come on. Huh? The Holy Spirit is tied to your spirit. You renew and get your mind lined up so the mind will get on the team. So you, you are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a body. Come on. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, you live in a body. When you got saved, I just told you the spirit is made perfect. The middle ground is the mind. Come on. That's the one in the middle. You got the body over here, you got the spirit over here. The spirit is perfect. The body ain't going to do nothing but what somebody tells it to do. You get your mind aligned with the Word of God, and when you get your mind aligned with the Word of God, it comes over to the team with the Spirit. So two against one, majority rules. Now your life begins to look like the Holy Spirit instead of the flesh world that you've been living in. Come on. It's just that good. Come on. So here we go. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. You notice he didn't say the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit about all my issues. Huh? He didn't say that, did he? No. He, saw, he didn't say the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit uh, uh, about all my sins, about all my shortcomings, about all the places I failed in life and come up short. No, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit about sonship. Come on. About being like God, about honoring, serving God. Let me share something with you. God is interested in your future, not your past. Come on. 
God is interested in where he's trying to take you, not where you come from. And let me, let me encourage you. If you got people around you and in your ear, and the only thing they do is talk about what's wrong with you and bring up the bad about you and the negative in your life, I can tell you this a hundred thousand times. You need to go get you some new friends. You need to change your environment because you're in a bad situation. I'm telling you, a negative friend or, or, or a negative uh, influence or, or someone who always talking about what's wrong with life and what's wrong with the world and especially what's wrong with you, you got to get them out of your ear. Come on. God is not a part of that conversation. God is not critical. God does not sit around criticizing. The Holy Spirit has no participation in conversations like that. And if you're in conversations like that, I promise you, the Holy Ghost ain't nowhere up off in it. Nowhere. Uh-uh. Because the Holy Spirit is positive. He talks about sonship and the things of heaven. He don't talk about all this crazy stuff that people be talking about. Okay? So here we go. Verse 17, Romans 8, 17. We're talking about the Holy Spirit tonight. If you've been born again, you got the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, you got him. You got him. Matter of fact, it's the Holy Ghost that led you to get on this live tonight. Did you know that? Huh? It's the Holy Spirit. See, your mind was in the game. Your mind, you got that thing renewed, and, and your mind said, I need the Word of God. And when your mind said, you need the Word of God, the Spirit in you, your spirit rose up and helped you and gave you strength through the Holy Ghost to know where you needed to go to get the word, he brought you on here. Maybe the people on lives all over the country, around the world. But that's the Holy Spirit. That's the operation of the Holy Spirit because you made a commitment in your mind to get the word of God. Your mind is the key. Your thought life is the key. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever a man thinketh, that's what he is. So if you'd have been thinking, well, I'm not going to listen to Bible study tonight. Okay, there you go. You don't get no word. Come on. huh? All right, here we go. Last verse. Romans 8, 17. Watch this. So we finish verse 16 with the spirit bearing witness that we are children, are sons of God. In verse 17, he, he parlays that on over. And he says, and if sons are children, watch this, here we go, then heirs, H-E-I-R-S, heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we also may be glorified together. What is he telling you here in verse 17? Because the spirit of God lives in you. Because of his presence on the inside of you at the new birth, that makes you a son of God. Watch this. And since you are a son of God, that makes you an heir of God. Okay, what does an heir, what does an heir do? And when an heir gets what the daddy leave behind or the mama leave behind. An heir gets the property. An heir gets an inheritance. Okay? And the Lord is telling you tonight, because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means that whatever Jesus get, I get it too. Good God Almighty. Huh? You didn't know that, did you? Whatever Jesus get, I get it too. Whatever Jesus can do, I can do it too. That's why John 14, 12, Jesus said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Come on. Matter of fact, you can love just like Jesus can love. That's why Romans 5 and 5, or yeah, 5 and 5, says that the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You can love just like Jesus loved. You are loved with the same love that God loves Jesus. He loves you and I the same way. Matter of fact, Jesus said, the works he do, shall you do also. When he went back to heaven, watch this here. He turned, released the Holy Spirit and turned the power to get the work done back over to the church. Let me ask you a question. Why are you walking around broke when you're a joint heir of a man whose streets are made of gold? Come on. I can't figure that out for nothing in the world. But you satisfied and content barely making it. Huh? Huh? Come on. Think about this stuff. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Heaven belongs to you. What did he say? Thy will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. You know what's wrong with most of us as Christians? We're too busy trying to have peace with earth instead of trying to transform earth into heaven. Come on. God ain't never called you to have peace on earth. He called you to turn earth into heaven. That's why you're unhappy. That's why you can't seem to make up no ground. And that's why even when you, when you get the husband, you get the wife, you get the house, you get the car, you get the prestige, you get the education, you get all that garbage, and you're still not happy. You know why you're not happy? Because God did not send us 
to be content here on planet Earth. He sent us here to transform planet Earth to make it look like heaven. All the way back to Genesis chapter 1 when he talked to Adam and Eve. Huh? So, so in saying that with the help of the Holy Spirit, now you understand the, 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 the significance and the importance of doing ministry work. This is not about just having good church. This is about transforming this earth to look like heaven, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's the catch. It's not going to look perfectly like heaven until Jesus comes back and it's done away with and we get a brand new one. But what we're supposed to do is begin to, to, to press and to go out and do our level best with the help of the Holy Spirit and get people born again. Watch this here. Because the more people that receive the Holy Spirit into their lives, that is ground and territory that is transformed and turned over to the kingdom of heaven. Come on. Huh? So you're a joint heir uh, with Jesus Christ. What Jesus have, you have. The same spirit Jesus have, you have. The power Jesus had, you got it. Come on. He said, I, in what is it, Luke 10, 19, I give you power, that's authority, and dominion, and dunamis power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, with the Holy Ghost living up on the inside of you, the devil don't have no power over you. Why are you depressed? Come on. Why are you defeated? Why are you discouraged? Why are you still having blue Mondays? Why come you can't seem to figure out nothing in life? I mean, everybody going to have issues and challenges, but you can't, you can't figure out nothing. You never can get your foot in the ground good. Come on. You're steady having to move. You're, you're jumping here. You're jumping there. You're mad at this person. You're upset at this person. You can't get along with that. You, you got to go here so you can try to have some peace. You got to go there so you can try to have some peace. What is wrong with you? Come on. You trying to find peace and you got the Prince of Peace living on the inside of you. Huh? What's going on? You're a joint heir. You have, the, you have the resources of heaven. Watch this. You have the backing of heaven. If you'll go, God will go with you. If you'll step out, God will step out with you. That's what he told Moses to do. Lift up your rod and take a step. So I'm telling you tonight, you got the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to take a step out of the back of the bus and get your raggedy behind up to the front of the bus and become the head and not the tail above only and not beneath and be the lender and stop being the one always trying to borrow $20 from somebody. Huh? I mean, you always got to borrow $20. You always got to live in somebody else's house. You always got to borrow somebody a cup of sugar. You always need somebody to, to give you an encouraging word. You always need somebody to, to help you out. Your car broke last week. You can't pay your rent this week. Got a gas bill due. Got a light bill too. Man, when are you going to get in your place? Come on. Huh? Huh? I tell you what, here's the first step. Acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. And God will reveal these things to you by his spirit. And your life will begin to change and transform. And I'm telling you, it, he makes all the difference in the world. Huh? He makes all. Matter of fact, the Bible lets us know it is the Holy Spirit-filled church that has to be moved out of the way so that the Antichrist can rise. Somebody said, when the Antichrist is going to show up? When the Holy Spirit-filled church is moved out of the way. That's when the Antichrist will rise. Come on. Huh? So, I encourage you today, receive your inheritance. Receive your sonship by the Holy Ghost. Receive your inheritance in the Holy Ghost. Receive freedom in the Holy Ghost. Re receive deliverance from fear and frustration in the Holy Ghost. Receive re re deliverance from doubt in the Holy Ghost. He's been sent alongside to help you conquer and win in this life. Don't forget... Uh, I got to get ready to go. Don't forget, this fourth Sunday, we are having our youth department annual day. It's going to be awesome, 10 o'clock, right here in the building uh, or on Facebook Live. You pick, you pick whatever one you want to do. This fourth Sunday, we're going to have a whiteout. What that mean? <laughs> that mean, they told me it mean everybody wear white and denim. That mean come to church, wear your denim jeans, your denim skirts. Put on your Chuck Taylors, your Nike, or whatever wets your whistle. And put on your white top, your white blouse, your white shirt, or whatever you got. And we're going to have a whiteout for Sunday for our youth annual day. And we, got, we have, the, we have uh, Sister Stephanie Henderson, the CEO of Gospel Rap. She's going to be here 
uh, uh, singing, ministering to us. And then we're going to cap it off uh, with a, with a uh, message from the mayor of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, uh, Frank Scott Jr. Yeah, he's a mayor of Little Rock, but you know what? He's also a preacher. And you know what? When the mayor stuff is over with, he's still going to be a preacher. And so we're excited to have him with us uh, this fourth Sunday at 10 o'clock. Join us online if you want to, or you can come in the building. Uh, we, so we thank God for all of you all, for those of you that are supporting us financially and sowing your tithes and sowing your offerings because we need your help to do what we've been called to do. So we appreciate you uh, supporting this church and this ministry as we try to spread and cover the world with the word of God. Listen, y'all have a good night. We walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you this day and always.